Hi, my name is Fesel Pawaskar, and I'm here to talk about the important performance parameters of Portascap DC motors. We will explain in brief about how to read catalog data of Portascap motors, especially how to read the speed torque curves provided in the Portascap catalog. For the motor to turn, two magnetic fields are required to interact with one another. The stator and the rotor, which produce interacting magnetic fields, are shown in the exploded view along with other parts. Electrical power, in the form of voltage and current, is provided as input to the motor and mechanical power, in the form of torque and speed, is given out as output. Certain amounts of the input power that are lost in the stator core and in the windings are known as core loss and copper loss respectively. However, our motors are coreless, so core loss is negligible. Now we come to the important topic of understanding the fundamentals of speed torque characteristics and given in our catalog, and how to correlate it with the application. The torque speed characteristic, represented by a curve, defines the speed as a function of torque. In most applications, the motor runs at definite torque and speed, shown as a point on the slide. In some other cases, the motor may have to run at a much higher speed, while providing lower torque or sometimes the motor would need to work in a stalled condition as seen in the slide. Some of the applications may demand the acceleration of the motor, and this acceleration would need a higher torque at a higher speed. These are all the different load operating points that should be considered along with the limits of the motor's performance represented by the curve. This will help you select the motor for your application. Now we'll consider the motor speed against the application. We need to select a motor where the higher limit of its permissible speed would be higher than the operating point in the application. The max permissible speed corresponds to the upper speed limit of the motor and can be found in the catalog. Let's consider the torque requirement now. In actuality, all the operating points can be covered in few crucial values and one of them is the average torque required. Another one is the higher torque needed at the end of the operation or near the extreme operating point where the acceleration may end. At this point, we have the higher speed at a higher torque. Another important value is the time required for acceleration or time span to run the motor at higher torque values. We need a motor with higher max continuous torque than the torque required in the application. At the same time, we need a motor that can produce higher torque for required acceleration for short periods of time in the application as well. The max continuous torque can be found in our catalog page. The max continuous torque also defines the thermal limit of our motor. Up to this limit, the motor can be continuously loaded without overheating the motor or its windings. Thermal capability of the motor can be enhanced by a few means as shown in the slide. By this, we can improve the heat dissipation of the motor, so the continuous operating range for torque can be extended to some higher value, maybe around 25% more than the recommended max continuous torque value as seen in the catalog. As given in the speed torque curve in the catalog, there is a temporary working range where we can overload the motor for a certain time span. This time span depends on the motor size and the motor design. For every motor size, there is a definite time span and the limitation comes from the coil temperature and more precisely how fast the coil or the winding in the motor heats up during operation. The natural time scale is nothing but the thermal time constant of the motor and its winding. Practically, for smaller motors, the time constant is several seconds and for larger motors, it would be up to half a minute. The safe time to run the motor at two to three times the max continuous torque is as shown in the slide. Now we need to understand the importance of current in the application. Practically, the motor heats up due to the current supplied and not because of the torque load. However, there is a relation between the current and the torque and the relation is very simple. There is a direct relationship between the current and the torque for the motor. The torque constant, Kt, is the proportionality factor for a given motor's current and torque. So the torque can be replaced by the current on the x-axis as shown in the slide. Current measured at max continuous torque is the max continuous current. The torque constant is provided in the catalog as shown in the slide highlighted in red. 
The torque constant is the amount of torque in millinewton meters produced when one amp of current is passed through the motor. We have understood that if we limit the current, the torque would be limited as well. In an application, the power supplier and the controller used may have some current limitations which may result in limiting the torque from the motor. This would affect the continuous and short-term operation of the motor. Due to the lowering of the current, the load operating points cannot be easily handled by the motor which they are designed for. Some points to summarize our understanding of the speed torque curves for DC motors, one being that the motors have speed limits depending on the brush and bearing life. It should also be noted that the motor's torque and current are in proportion to one another, with the torque constant being the proportionality factor between them. Next, motors have torque limits, and their max values are provided in the catalog. In addition, they also have temporary working ranges for short-term operation. The time that limits the short-term operation is known as the thermal time constant.